Here in Illinois, you gotta burn your hive, burn the bees, bury it underground. That's how bad it is. It is so highly contagious, there's no tolerance. It is the most deadly bacterial infection in the brood area that has ever hit bees. I mean, it is really bad news. Beekeepers are reporting a strange smell coming from their hive, and sometimes this is really a serious disease. You need to be aware of what I'm talking about today when your hive smells funny. I'm talking about American fowl brood. Should you panic? Should you worry? It's a weird smell. And these colonies that I'm walking around and looking at today, like this one right here, I mean, look at all the bees. They have a funny odor about them, as well as these over here. And you can tell they're really working hard, doing a lot of foraging right now. And so what is making this strange smell? One of the things that's making my hive smell kind of funny is this. Well, what we have here is goldenrod. Look at that. Depending on where you live, this time of the year, this is the very last day of summer, we're going to have a lot of goldenrod for a few more weeks, actually. Bees are working it pretty heavy. Goldenrod's really good for bees. I'm telling you what, beekeepers, this is good for bees. This actually stimulates brood production when they go out and start gathering up nectar. In fact, if they have a bumper crop of goldenrod and other asters in late summer, early fall, it can actually induce a swarm. That's what bees do when they have a, a pretty heavy nectar flow. Now you're walking by your hive maybe and you're smelling something and it's unusual. You started walking around your yard, maybe your house, and you thought, what is that strange funky smell. I don't know what that is. And all at once you kind of narrowed it down to your beehives and you're like, oh my gosh, not American fowl brood. Let me tell you the difference. Now things like goldenrod and, and daisies that happen in the fall, they produce a very funky smell. And it smells different than American fowl brood. I'm going to describe it to you so you don't panic, okay? Number one, if you think you have American fowl brood, because of the smell, you need to inspect your hive. Take a frame of brood, look at it. American fowl brood has perforated, capped over pupae. The bacteria kind of builds up pressure and it causes the uh, cap cells of the pupae to kind of uh, blow open for lack of a better explanation. And then it kind of sinks and it has a perforation where it kind of broke open. So it has what we call sunken brood, perforated brood. You can take a toothpick and rub it around in there and draw it out slowly. And if the contents of that pupae actually stretches out a half inch or more, uh, that's gonna be kind of a ropey pull out and that means it's American fowl brood. If you have that, you gotta call your bee inspector instantly because this is the worst thing to ever happen to you as a beekeeper in my opinion. And so it's not the same as the smell we have from goldenrod. Goldenrod just has a more sour, funny smell. How would I differentiate between goldenrod smell and American fowl brood? All right, here's how I do it. If I were to find a dead animal that had been dead out in the sun for maybe a week or two, a carcass of a dead animal, that's what American fowl brood smells like. I mean, it's so bad, you can lose your cookies. I mean, you just can't keep your cookies down. That's how bad it smells. One time at EAS during our master beekeeper testing, we had some American fowl brood, frames of American fowl brood uh, that were no longer, they'd been made not contagious, of course, but they smelt so bad in that room where we were examining them that I physically wanted to throw up. That's how bad it is. So goldenrod aster smell in late summer, early fall, it's not is nothing like that, okay? Nectar coming into the hive from goldenrod, and as they work that nectar, as they're drying it down, it really does permeate all around your hive. Now, this is really good for your bees. Let me tell you why goldenrod is so good. Goldenrod stimulates your bees to produce more bees. It makes the stimulation of incoming nectar to stimulate the queen to lay more eggs, and that's what we're trying to do is build up bees of winter physiology. Now, sometimes it gets stomped out by some fall rain coming in and they can't go out and forage very much. But in most cases, this goldenrod, these asters of fall, really do help our colonies a lot. Does it make good honey? Not bad. It, the honey doesn't taste like, it's, that, like, like it smells when it's first brought into the hive. 
In fact, I've noticed in the spring, the bees will open up some of that honey they stored in the fall and I can smell it again in the spring. Kind of, kind of interesting. Now, goldenrod won't last forever. It's gonna go away long before it's gonna be enough to carry your bees into winter. So that's why I advocate always feeding your bees this time of the year because goldenrod is not always predictable. It's not always a sure thing. You feed from the top like I showed in my most recent videos, that's a sure thing. You know you can actually control how much food your bees are eating. You can actually stimulate extra brood rearing by giving them feed from the top in that special secret recipe <laughs> that I gave you in the last few videos. So be sure and watch those videos if you haven't already. Also, I wanna to talk to you today about something I've not mentioned, I've never mentioned it at all. Now, some of you have mentioned it to me many times and asked me about it. And I wanna to talk to you today about Hive Life Conference. It's gonna be in Surville, Tennessee this year. I've been invited by Cayman Reynolds to be a part of that, and I'm really looking forward to it. I think they've already sold one thousand tickets to beekeepers dang this thing is awesome people uh, i really want to encourage you if it's in the knoxville area about uh, about 30 miles uh, east of knoxville smoky mountains good trip january the 6th and the 7th i think check me on that but it is going to be an awesome thing i look forward to being there and seeing all of you there beekeepers from everywhere show up look at this website look at this talks about uh, what they're going to be doing. They have over a million dollars worth of things that they uh, that vendors bring. We're going to have a table there vending things like our backyard beekeeping book, autographed copy of it. You can get this on our website if you want that and not going to the conference. But uh, it's a great conference. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, Cayman Reynolds uh, and I talked on the phone about, oh, well over an hour a few weeks ago. Really enjoyed talking to Cayman. Uh, but Cayman is a YouTuber, a beekeeping YouTuber here on YouTube as well. So what Cayman did a few years ago, he gathered up all the beekeepers that had YouTube channels because Cayman agrees and feels like I do that the, the people that are making the most influence and the most impact today into beekeeping, YouTube is having the most impact, I believe on getting more people started in beekeeping, it really is. And by the way, a lot of us have different types of beekeeping channels. Uh, mine is for beginners. I really like helping new people, you know, one to five years established, kind of small hobbyists. Uh, other beekeepers, not gonna mention any names because I'm gonna forget somebody, but other beekeepers have uh, different uh, approaches to their channel. Like one might be more intermediate beekeepers, sideliners, and it may have hundreds and, of colonies. And then there's others that have thousands of colonies or commercial beekeepers. Now, I don't think we ever should draw a line in the sand and say, oh, I don't like that guy's channel. This guy's better. He does more of this. He does less of that. That's not what it's about. We all bring different things to the table. If it wasn't for all of us, there'd be a gap. So all of us need to contribute. When I, I'm a ham radio operator. When I first got into ham radio a few years ago, I was surprised when I went onto YouTube at how all these different ham radio big time channel guys all got along. They actually did uh, videos together. They actually enjoyed each other's presence. They still do. They actually have live chats together, live streams together. They actually uh, support one another. That's what I believe we should do as beekeepers that have that are content creators here on YouTube. And it's really turning out that way. I think some of the top beekeepers that have YouTube channels really do get along and support each other and encourage each other. Never should we ever try to discourage people from watching another guy's channel because they're different or they do things differently. We need that variety. We're all a little different. And so we all bring a little more uh, things to the table rather than just all doing the same thing. So I, I hope that you understand that this Hive Life Conference really is, and it kind of got its start uh, from beekeepers on YouTube, getting together, meeting the public, interacting with the public, uh, sharing things. And now all the vendors are coming because they know this is really where people are getting drawn into beekeeping here on YouTube. And so they have a better marketplace in selling things. It is just wiping out uh, any other kind of conference when it comes to numbers. Oh my gosh, it is just phenomenal. So I'll leave links in the description below and in the feed here that you can see in my feed. And I really want you to be there if you can. 
January 6th and the 7th uh, near Knoxville, Surville. Not sure if I'm saying that right. I'm from Tennessee, by the way. Uh, I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee uh, until I was a teenager. So uh, it's going to be a, a fun time for beekeepers. I really want you to be there and check that out. Get a ticket because I don't know how many more they're going to be able to sell. I think well, I don't know how many. They might be sold out. I hope not. I hope you can make it. Boy, when you're done with this video, you need to get over there and get a ticket. And I look forward to seeing you guys. Sherry and I both will be there. We're looking forward to seeing you guys there. Uh, check it out. It's time to announce the winner of my ultimate beekeeping course. Oh, wow. We had a great response. I asked you guys to share with me some beekeeping videos you'd like for me to put together on getting your bees through the winter. You left a lot of good comments down there. You had to be a uh, subscriber and you had to have left a comment and guess who won Joe Harrell you're the winner way to go Joe uh, be sure and email this email address right here and let my staff know that you won and they'll get that ultimate class seven online courses sent out to you right away Joe congratulations now if you're interested in getting a hold of some of my online courses I really think the one you should watch right now is getting your bees through the winter. I've got so many great tips that go beyond what I share with you here on YouTube, and it will help you understand how to get those bees ready for winter. Now, if you haven't seen my most recent video where I do talk about feeding my res secret recipe to bees to stimulate bees with winter physiology, folks, check it out right here. I'm going to meet you over there. Let's go. Hurry up. Get over there. Click on it. Let's move over. See you over there.